Joining me now is celebrity and royal commentator Kinsey Schofield. Kinsey, let's start with Mel Gibson. He's uh, set social media on fire with his blistering assessment of Kamala Harris. He said she has an appalling track record, no policies to speak of, and she's got the IQ of a fence post. Uh, <laughs> is uh, Mel Gibson too big to be cancelled? Does he even care? He produces his own stuff these days, doesn't he? Well, look, he, he has been cancelled. He made horrible anti-Semitic remarks during an arrest in 2006 and apologized profusely. He also financially and emotionally supported Robert Downey Jr. when he was dealing with his addiction problems. And RDJ publicly begged to Hollywood while accepting an award to give Mel Gibson another chance. So he's been humbled and he's survived. And like you said, he's become a self-made man, an entrepreneur. Uh, but I think he clearly just feels very passionate about this issue and wanted to speak his mind. Well, no, we applaud uh, people speaking their mind. There's certainly plenty of celebrities who are saying outrageous things about Donald Trump. So if uh, Mel Gibson wants to uh, share his thoughts, I think uh, everyone can accept that, but probably not Hollywood. It's probably going to stop him getting any jobs. Uh, uh, now let's go to notorious left-wing influencer Billy Nelson. She's uh, humiliated herself online by appearing to fall for a Photoshop image of Kamala Harris in a McDonald's uniform. Uh, she thought that this was real. Uh, she has since taken it down and used the backlash to portray Republicans as snowflakes for calling her out on that misinformation. Uh, but this Photoshop wasn't uh, very sophisticated, was it, Kinsey? They basically Photoshopped Kamala's face on some white girl's body. Yeah. I mean, I think the idiot snowflake is the person that wants to be an authority on something but doesn't do their due diligence. Trying to point the blame at a group of people completely unrelated to your social media activity is a masterclass in gaslighting. It is. I mean, it was obviously, I would hope, an honest mistake. I don't think she was deliberately trying to mislead, but everyone stuffs up. If you stuff up, take it down, but then don't go attacking those who are pointing out your error. Now, PR expert Ed Coram James has offered an assessment of why Harry and Meghan have appeared to suddenly distance themselves from each other. They're not doing appearances together. He says it's all part of a rebrand they seem to be undergoing because their joint image has become so toxic. Uh, what else can you tell us about this? Rita, how many times have you and I used the words rebrand and Harry and Meghan in the same sentence? It's becoming <laughs> exhausting when it comes to these two. But what I can tell you is that Radar Online here in the States, their headline today is Ruthless Meghan Markle set to give henpecked husband Harry the chop after she butchered yeah. ties with dad and royal family before axing her closest friends. And Radar is saying specifically uh, that they are delving into some of these rumors that are exploding that the Sussexes have secretly separated. So clearly a rebrand is what we would prefer. Hopefully this expert is right, but stateside, um, they're saying that these that this separation could be uh, it could be it could be much more meaningful. Wow, well, that would be massive news. And uh, what would follow? Would, would Harry go back to the UK, the prodigal son, and and rejoin the family, become a working royal again? Uh, can you see that even as a possibility? Not if Prince William has anything to do with it. I think he's got a lot of begging to do uh, to his brother. I think <laughs> King Charles is always going to have a soft spot in his heart for Harry, but... I mean, Prince William was trying to protect his wife in the midst of cancer while Harry and Meghan were lobbing grenades at them. And I can't imagine the stress he was under during that time. It's got to be hard to forgive. I think uh, you're right there. But whilst Charles is king, he probably would be calling the shots there. Now, let's go to the Diddy case. A New York judge has rejected Sean Diddy Combs' proposal for a gag order against government officials to prevent them from leaking information relating to his sex trafficking case. Uh, he doesn't want this stuff to get out to the media. Uh, what does that tell you? I would have thought uh, Diddy would be throwing all his celebrity mates under the bus. 
I mean, that could potentially be coming when it's time for court and when it's time for him to testify. But what we're seeing right now is how, how important public relations really are to Sean Combs. He's desperately trying to control the narrative behind bars, allowing his attorneys to do documentaries and TV hits, encouraging his children to defend him to the media. Um, you know, what his team is trying to do is get the uh, public to assume that the government is leaking some of this negative information about him, like that Cassie video. But the reality is he's got a lot of enemies. And who? Uh, I really don't believe it's the government. And I believe it's one of the many people that he ticked off throughout his career that had access to, to that, that, that video, had access to, to that information.